Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Yes, I praise you, Lord. You are God. I bless you, God. I bless you, Jesus. I bless you, God. Yes, I bless you, God. You are God. I adore you, Lord. I adore you, Lord. I adore you, Lord. Yes, I adore you, Lord. You are God. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. Yes, I praise you, God. You are God. Father, we thank you. We adore you, give you glory, bless your holy name for this time before you. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done. Thank you for the gift of the new month. Thank you for the gift of a new day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the power in your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for all you have done for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. For our callings, we thank you. For our family members, we thank you. Thank you for our destinies. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Father, for what we do. Even online this afternoon, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, be exalted, be adored, in the name of Jesus. Be thou glorified, Father, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, as I decrease, Father, increase mightily in me in the name of Jesus. Increase mightily and give me utterance in the name of Jesus. Bring your people in, Lord, even to learn and to dine with you at your table. Father, we thank you. Glory, adoration be unto your name. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. My friends and people of God, you are most welcome again. You are most welcome to keeping your hope alive and moment of truth. Yes, we have been away for some time. I was in transit, and uh, thank God and I'm an, on a missionary walk to Nigeria, and uh, to God be the glory. Oh, there's electricity now, there is internet to walk and to reach out unto you, and that's why I'm here. I missed you, and I decree the goodness and the mercy of God upon us all in the name of Jesus. Even as the year runs out into the end, our lives will not run to an end in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Uh, welcome back to Keeping Your Hope Alive and the Moment of Truth. The Word of God is powerful. And uh, today, in the Moment of Truth, I bring you the Word of God. The Word of God that is able to keep you, the Word of God that is able to give you hope, give me hope. The Word of God that is able to bless, to deliver, to save, and to save lives. This is what I have brought to you. And uh, according to the book of John, chapter 6, verse 63, I will read from here. It says, John 6, John 6 verse 63, it says, It is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. I take it again. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. But the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I brought you the word of God. They are life, they are spirit. They are spirit, they are life. They are spirit because they are able to move. Able to move. Ghana, anywhere, Nigeria, the U.S., London, South Korea, North Korea. Anywhere in the world, the word of God is spirit. It is alive to reach anyone. And it is life because it's, the word of God is able to rejuvenate, to replenish, to restore, to deliver, to bless. That is what the God, word of God is all about. And I bring you this word today. And I pray that God Almighty will quicken his words in our lives and situations in Jesus' name. And the moment of truth I brought for you is uh, in the book of... 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, talking about the promises of God. The promises of God, the Bible says, they are yes and they are amen. I want to read to you. 
for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him is amen. Again, for all the promises of God, all the promises of God in him are yes and in him is the word amen. That is the fulfillment of every promise of God is yes and amen. In him, because he's a faithful God, whatever he has said he will do, he will do it. He will do it. The promise of God are the promises of God are yes and in him are amen unto the glory of God by us. Hallelujah. God is faithful to bring to pass all he has said he will do for us. Only if. And that is where, where I'm going this afternoon. If. If. Let's see. Follow me to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. It says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Again, it says, It shall come to pass. That is, all the blessings, all the promises of God to bless, to deliver, to prosper us from verse 1 down, down, down to, the, to verse 14 in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm not going to go into all the promises. We know this. We know this. We know these blessings and these promises. They are God's promises. But there is a but that is an if. It shall come to pass if thou, if you and I, if only we will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord our God. If only we will hearken, we will listen, we will obey diligently, the Bible says. Diligently, diligently, not halfway. Diligently, if only we will obey and hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord our God. Not to anyone's voice, except that person that has come to you in the name of Jesus, as I have come to you today, only in the name of Jesus. I have no word of my own. I have no word of my own. I have the word of God before me to deliver unto you. So anyone that comes to you in the name of Jesus, yes, listen to that voice. And what I'm telling you is that God is able to fulfill all his promises. He has made unto us, if only, if only we will listen, we will hearken diligently unto all and to observe, to do and observe and do. Listen, obey, observe, and do all he had commanded us to do. Then he will play his part. He's ready always. He's a covenant keeping God. He's a promise fulfilling God. That is our God. That is the God that we, that we serve. Hallelujah. That is the God that we serve. He's a covenant-keeping God. He is a promise-fulfilling God. That is God for us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. If only we will listen and obey to observe to do. Come down, observe, and do. Ask for grace to do what he has done told us to do, then he will fulfill his part. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's see what the book of, the, what says Second, Corinth, Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. I'm talking about the but. The little but and the little if. That is to say our own part. This is our part. Our part that we, we must play for God to fulfill his own part of the deal. It's a deal. God says, if you do this, I will do this. If you do this, I will do this. If you listen to me, I will fulfill my promises. Are we listening to God? Are we hearkening to his voice? Are we listening? Are we observing? Are we calm down enough to observe all that he asks us to do? Are we doing them even after observing? Are we doing them? God is able and is ready to bless us and fulfill all his promises and keep his covenant if only we can keep our own covenant our own part of the covenant and our own part of the promises hallelujah 
Second, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, one, pray, two, seek my face, three, and turn from their wicked ways, four, and I will hear, then I will hear from heaven and we forgive their sin and we heal their land. If this is the moment of truth. If, only if, there is a condition. There is a condition. There is a condition, people of God. There is a condition. If only, if, but, if. There are many conditions for us to fulfill as human beings before God can fulfill his own part of promises and covenant. God will help us in the name of Jesus. If my people especially the people of God, those of us that know God, that have Christ, believers, especially. If my people who are called by my name say this book of God, shall I humble themselves? Are we humble enough? And pray. Do we pray enough? And seek my face. Whose face do you seek? Your uncle, your auntie, your boss, the politicians. Whose face are you seeking? As a believer, whose face are you seeking? But God says, if we will seek his face, if only we will seek the face of God, if only we will seek the face of God and turn from our wicked ways. Wickedness is killing this nation. People are wicked. People are wicked. If not, the resources of this country, God-given resources, they are enough, more than enough, to make everyone live fine. There are resources in this country, in this, in this country of Nigeria. God has blessed us. God has given us a lot of resources, manpower, natural resources. Name it. If only, if only our leaders, if only politicians, our people, people, leaders can share and allow others can live and allowed others to live. If only they can live and allow, and allow others to live and survive. We have enough resources. That's why God says, if my people, as examples, even believers, even in the churches, the wealth of the church should prosper everyone in that church. The wealth of the church, the body of Christ, should be enough to take care of believers in their environment. The wealth of each church, the wealth of each denomination should be able to care for church members. The weight of a particular denomination should be able to help their members. Nobody should be lacking anything anywhere. God has provided. But are we hearkening? Are we listening? Are we observing? Are we even observing our neighbors? Are we observing those around us that are suffering? Do we even know? And if we know, are we doing? Are we doing what God says we should do? Be your brother's keeper. Are we doing... People of God, are we doing, even as examples and followers of Christ Jesus, are we doing, if we are doing, how much are we doing? Are we doing enough? Are we sharing what we have with others? He says, Jesus said when you have two coats, he told his disciples when he was here, if you have two coats, give one out. Two, if you have two coats, give one out. Are you giving? Are you giving or you are, you are, you are selfish? And you like to hoard. Are you selfish or you are, you are giving? Are you a giver? Are you a giver? Whatever you are hoarding, you are hoarding, you are hoarding in vain. I pray that we enjoy what we have in life in the name of Jesus. But when you don't give, but you love to hoard and hoard and hoard and hoard and hoard, you are taking nothing anywhere. They are all vanity, upon vanity. Nothing, nothing is only six feet. Why don't you share? That's why God said, even we as believers, as children of God, in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves, it is only when you humble yourself that you are able to listen, hearken to the voice of God, observe your environment, observe the word of God, and do what he asks you to do. Hallelujah. God will bless us in the name of Jesus. God will give us wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom to leave this world. In the name of Jesus. He says, we, if we humble ourselves and pray. I know we pray 
Nigeria, Nigerians pray a lot. I know it. I see it. Nigerians pray a lot. But there is more to praying. There is more to it than praying. There is more. There is, there's a lot more. Bible says, pray, watch and pray. Pray, walk, watch. We need to walk. We need to walk. We need to watch. That is observing. We need to be sensitive to our environment. God will help us in the name of Jesus. We need to pray more and seek the face of God and turn from our wicked ways. You can preach. Anybody can preach. We have been called out to go make disciples. To go spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have all been called to be light wherever we are. To be light. Be a light wherever you are. Tell people, tell people, tell people to leave their wicked ways. Wickedness will kill the wicked ones. Even if we think that God is not doing anything about them right now. Even when we think that, oh, nothing is happening. They are having their ways. They will not have their ways. Wickedness will kill wicked people in the mighty name of Jesus. That is what the Bible says. Only But those ones around you that you can talk, talk to or pray, pray, pray for, that God should turn them and to, so that they can change from wickedness and to doing good. God will be happy about it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Quickly, for God's promises to come to pass, I want to give you two or three um, three things to do. We must be close to God. For God to fulfill his promise concerning you, we must be close to God. Proximity. 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 Two must agree. You must be in agreement with God. You must be in agreement with God. You must know God. You must know who your God is. The Bible says it in Daniel 11.32. That those that know their God, they shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. You must know the God that you are serving. You must be close to God. You must be close to God. I must be close to God for him to deliver his promises unto us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God must be effective. You can't say you know God, you don't know the word of God. You are only deceiving yourself. You cannot say that you know God, you know Jesus, you know all about the Holy Spirit, yet you don't know the word of God. You don't have a Bible. You have a Bible, you don't know what is in the Bible. You're only deceiving yourself. You don't know God. God is his is word. The word of God is him. And God is his word. Revelation chapter 19 verse 13 says, And Jesus Christ is the word of God. You must know God, you must know God through Jesus. You must know the word of God to know God. All his characters, all about God, who he is. All about Jesus, all about the Holy Spirit. You must know God, you must know the word of God. The word of God is powerful for teaching, for admonition, for everything to bless us, to deliver. The word of God is powerful. We must know the word of God. We must make friends with our, our Bibles. Not the TV all the time. I'm not saying we should not watch TV. But we must plan our time. We must have time to sit down with God. We must have time to sit down with God. The word of God. He's not going to come down here and talk to us. He has already talked to us. He's still talking to us through his words in the Bible. Hallelujah. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's get connected to God through his word. Number two, we must learn to some substantiate what the word of, of God says with action. We must learn to substantiate what the word of God says with action. That is why I say you pray, you must take action. Hallelujah. You are looking for a job. You are praying for a job. You prayed, but you, you remain in your, in your house, in your room. I know there are miracles, but we are talking about practical Christianity. You pray and apply faith. Then go out there. Look for a job. Go out there. Connect people. Talk to people. Go out there. Go out there. Faithfully go out there. Faithfully go out there. God will make connections for you. God will connect you. God will make provisions in miraculous ways. I know miracles can come to us in our houses. I believe it too. But when you pray, please substantiate your prayers, your faith, with action. With action. You can learn one or more jobs. You can do something. You can, not only your certificates, 
When you are like yoga, go out there and do something. You are you are prayerful. Yes, God is out there. He says, I will bless whatever you lay your hands upon to do. That's what that is the word of God. He said, I will prosper, I will bless whatever we lay our hands upon to do. Yes. That is God for you. The Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. This is the moment of truth. I bring you the word of God. I have no word of mine to bring it to you, but the word of God. And the third one is to get connected to God's promise through your charity. When you give the little that you have to others that don't have at all, you are touching the heart of God. You are touching the heart of God. Charity is a heartbeat of God. Giving taking care of the less privileged, the widows, the orphans, the needy, anywhere around you, you are touching the heart of God, the heartbeat of God. And therefore, for you to make God move on your behalf, for you to make God arise to your own situation, look around you, observe, and reach out to the needy. Reach out in your very little way to the needy. Reach out to them. And God will reach out to you too. He said, I will bless those who bless me. You are not going to heaven to bless God. He's already blessed. He's a blessed, he's a, he's a, he's a blessed God that blesses people. But he is ready to bless you. He's ready to bless me. When we bless others in our very little ways. Every day you must bless somebody. Every day find someone to bless. Don't say I don't have a lot. Don't say I have little. Oh, don't say, don't wait until you have thousands, millions, before you bless somebody. You don't even know how much, what impact that hundred naira or one dollar or one pound you are giving to somebody. You don't know the, the effect. You don't know the impact it's having upon his or her life. You don't know. You cannot even tell. So learn to give. Just give. Just give. Your little way, just give. And God will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you, in conclusion, if you have not seen the hand of God in your life, if God has promised you a lot and you are not seeing God's promises come to pass, please check yourself. Check yourself. This is the moment of truth. Check yourself. You are doing something wrong. Is that you are not listening? You are not observing what God said, God said we should do? You are not obeying? You are not taking steps? You are not doing? You are not, you are not reaching out to the needy? You want God to Bless you. Bless others. I'm telling you about it, Billy. Bless others. Have respect for the word of God. Have time to sit down with God. There's, there's God. There's God. It's powerful. It's everywhere we, we are. Don't wait until you get to your house or you get to your room before you talk to God. Talk to God anywhere. Even under the showers. Talk to God. He's, your God is our maker. And Jesus is our friend. He's our brother. We, have, we are joined here with Jesus Christ. He's our brother, our divine brother. We are here together with him. And the Holy Spirit is our comforter, is our counselor, is our teacher, is our senior partner, is my senior partner. So don't wait for, don't wait until you have the time, because the time may not come easily. So let's work with God so that his promises can come to pass in our lives. The moment of truth today, the world is that God is faithful. His promises are yes, they are amen. That is, he doesn't fail. They will come to pass. But if, only if, only if you be humbled and pray and seek the face of God and turn from your wicked ways and tell others to turn from their wicked ways. There is too much wickedness in the land. Too much wickedness going on. Too much wickedness. God is not going to close his eyes. It's not going to, it's only watching, giving them long rope to pull. If you are one of them, please repent. Please repent. Don't do evil. Evil will pursue you if you do evil. Evil will pursue you. In the daylight, in the midnight, it will pursue you. In the afternoon, evil will pursue the person. Even if it is only the physical, it's going to pursue him or her in the spiritual until it is manifested in the physical. Do not do evil. Stop doing evil. Don't do evil. Stop doing evil. There's too much bloodshed. I beg you in the name of God. I beg you in the name of God. I beg you, go to, back to God in repentance. Go back to God in repentance and rely on him and keep your hope high that all will be well. That all will be well. All will be well. I am sure of that. All will be well. All will be well in the name of Jesus. Till I come again, your way, I don't know, when there's network, when there's 
there's internet, when there is electricity, when I'm able to, I catch up with you again. But meanwhile, let's rejoice in the Lord. Let's keep our hope high. Let us rejoice that God is able to keep his promises and fulfill them and that we have the grace to do what he says we should do so that our own blessings will come and reach us in the name of Jesus. So that when we reach out to others, God will reach out to us. God will send us helpers in the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching and listening. God bless you. I love you. Jesus loves you. Bye.